Hey guys and welcome back to this week's edition of The Early Stoppage. We're here today with Kurt Hollibar. Man, how's things going with you? Oh man, everything uh, good good as of right now. How's things up in Louisiana then? Oh, they're not too bad. Yeah. Well, of course, I mean, you had a fight, I don't know, was it about five, six weeks ago now? Um, it was uh, it was a crazy fight. I still believe it deserved fight of the night. And a lot of stuff has happened since then. But I guess we will, we've got to begin with the fight itself. I mean, it was very close. And even statistically, you did outstrike Steven Seiler. Uh, have you had a chance to rewatch that fight, man? Yeah, I've actually, uh, you know, I've sat back and watched it a couple of times. And, uh, you know, needless to say, get mad every time I watch it. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. I mean, it was it was a very exciting fight. Um, when you were Thank in you. there, how did it feel? Uh, you know, it didn't really feel any different than any other fight. Uh, you know, credit to Steven Siler, man, the dude was good. I knew he was going to be good. Uh, he had a good clinch, with, which uh, worked very well because I actually kind of got spiked on my head in the first round, kind of on my neck. So uh, the clinch after that was very effective. Um, it was it was an absolutely fantastic fight, I've got to agree. Um, how did your, I mean, it was a close fight as well. This is the other thing, even though most people scored it, you know, two rounds to Steven Siler, but there was a case for you winning the, I think it was the second round. How did your corner uh, score it? Uh, yeah, it was definitely, you know, I definitely thought I pulled the second round in the judges' scorecards. Uh, you know, he had my back in the first round, and, you know, I don't know. Luckily, I survived a few rear naked chokes, uh, a few heavy punches from the ground and pound when he had my back. And, uh, you know, I knew I knew he had that round, so when that round ended, I just knew that I had to get the next round. Yeah, well, you you went on to you went on to give him a fight. I mean, the first round it looked like Stephen Siler might be able to finish you, but you proved you proved your worth, and that that's one thing to say for sure. Um, when when you went backstage, did you think that did you see yourself maybe getting the bonus? Did you see did you think the fight was exciting when you were in there? Uh, yeah, man, I really did. I really thought that that was a fight, you know, a back and forth. You know, he wins the first round, I win the second round. Uh, I'm winning a third round until I make a mistake, and then he capitalizes and finishes off in a good position. So, you know, both of us pretty bloodied up. And that, to me, that was definitely fight of the night. I mean, this is now the situation. There is a lot that's happened since this fight. And the first thing that we've got to talk about is Pat Healy and the drugs test. I mean, he had to hand over his um, he had to hand over his submission of the night winnings, and he handed that to Brian Caraway. But um, Jim Miller got to keep his bonus, and you and Stephen Siler, you went home with just your just your regulars. Uh, what, right. You, what? How do you now feel knowing that Pat Healy, you know, he's he's you know he's broken the rules effectively, and you don't get any credit from it, but every, he's just seemed to have lost it all and given it back to the company. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, first off, man, it's you know. I really, I really hate that you know that happened to him, but at the same time, everybody knows the rules, you know. And whether it's that bad of a drug or not, you know, it's still on the rules list, and they should know, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of feel bad because I mean, well, for one, I feel like I got beat by Pat Healy twice, and I only fought him once, you know. <laughs> and uh, so. You know, you know, the, the guys know the rules. That that is true. I mean, you say it right, completely there. I mean, you had your first uh, first Zuffer, I guess, yeah, Zuffer promotional debut against Pat yeah. Healy at lightweight, and that was that was something in itself because Pat Healy has gone on to do fantastic things in the UFC. He's a fantastic competitor out so, uh, in strike force. And you were a guy who, again, gave him also a competitive fight. Um, yeah. Looking looking back on that fight now, a lot of people were even saying that Pat Healy had no chance against Jim Miller because his last performance was it wasn't the regular him. But in my eyes, it was you bringing it to him. You bought something that he didn't expect. How did you see that fight compared to the one with Steven Seiler? Uh, you know, I 
know, basically the same, you know. Uh, you know, I, I figured I'd have the advantage on the feet with Pat. You know, I knew he's a great, great wrestler. And, uh, you know, I knew he was going to be bigger and stronger. Uh, you know, I just felt that I got a uh, – I stood in front of him too long instead of cutting angles on him, which, uh, you know, got him to take down and won him the fight. That was, and again, this was another fight whereby, st- in terms of statistics, you were able to outstrike him, which is it, right. it's, it's phenomenal that you got you've been put up against these. You know, Pat Healy has probably looked at around the top ten, uh, at least top eight in the lightweight division, and Steven Siler, he's what four and one in the UFC right now. And I guess the other thing we got to note about the Steven Siler fight is you took that fight on five weeks' notice. Is that correct? Right. So um, you you took that fight on five weeks' notice. You've fought the top ten in the division. Then we got to we got to get straight to the crap here. You got cut by the UFC. Yeah. And this this is what makes no sense to me, and I'm sure it makes no sense to you. How you can have a guy who has put on two fantastic performances and questionably against Pat Healy, definitely punched above your weight. You made you made it an exciting fight that nobody expected. And you get cut. How did how did the cut happen? Well, you know, uh, it kind of came to my manager. He, I guess, he knew right after the fight that, uh, you know, that I was probably going to get cut. You know, I I would have thought I'd at least had, you know, I had a four fight contract and they cut me after two fights. So I would have thought that I at least had one more fight. You know, give me the three before I got cut. You know, I can kind of understand if I would have just got dominated and finished but you know I, I know the fight that I put up against Pat and the, and the fight that I put up against Siler and uh you know I thought that was definitely worth one more shot at least but you know it's a business and uh you know I know the rosters are slam pack right now and I know that's probably the main reason that they had to let me go but uh you know I'm you know, I just got to do what I can to work my way back in my head, it do, it doesn't make sense, and I think in terms of a business point of view, I can kind of see it, but then I can't. It's it's, it's one of those issues where you've got a guy who shows promise against two two very top tier competition, and then they keep guys in like Papi Abedi who have shown nothing in the UFC, and they're able to stick around for two fights. Uh, again, uh, Papi Abedi fought Tiago Alves, and he got he got finished. You fought Pat Healy, right. and you didn't get finished. So they, they've they've definitely got something wrong with their management. And as I said when I tweeted you in the first place, Mark Hunt lost his first UFC fight, and look where he got now. Right. In my head, you can't cut someone after after just one one performance against a, a real a, a UFC. He's turning into a UFC veteran, and Stephen Sider definitely is an MMA veteran. Um, oh yeah. But I guess we'd look uh, better look back at your uh, past and your future. I mean, you were the XFC, you were the XFC champion, I believe, in two weight classes. Yeah, that's not the uh, the big XFC. That's actually a smaller promotion in uh, Louisiana. A lot of people seem to get that confused, but uh, you know, I am the champion at 155 and 145. That's that's still better than everybody else who, pretty much yeah. everybody else who's listening to this show. That's that's more than anybody can say that they're a champion, not only in a promotion but who's got who holds two belts. So, um, are you planning to return back to the promotion? You know, what's what's your plans for the future now? Uh, well, as of right now, you know, uh, you know, the UFC is my ultimate goal. You know, I really don't I don't want to sign with Bellator. I don't want to sign World Series. You know, I want to be in the UFC, and I want to be fighting the best in the world. You know, uh, I really wish things could have been a little bit different. I didn't quite get the training camps that I needed for, you know, it was kind of two short-notice fights with Pat and Steven, uh, you know, but a lot of personal problems set me back a little bit also. You know, I'm uh, not going to use any excuses. You know, I fought how I probably would have fought anyway, but, you know, just for future in the future, you know, I'd like to get out to some big camps and, uh, you know, gain a little bit more knowledge and train with some of the, you know, some good strikers, some good wrestlers. And, uh, but as of right now, I got a fight July 12th in, uh, Houma, Louisiana. 
And uh, I think the opponent's going to be Jarrett Card. He's a former actual featherweight XFC champion and uh, a Bellator vet. So I plan on racking up a couple wins, man, and trying to get back to the UFC. Yeah, man, get straight back to it. And that's that's another thing we've got to note is you've only been professionally fighting now for, is it, uh, what, two and a half years? And uh, Since March 2011. There we are. So it's just it's less than two and a half years, and you've racked in a you've racked in a nine fight winning streak, and you fought what five times in the in the second year of fighting. Yep. These are things that these are things that the UFC don't seem to have considered. I still I don't as you can tell I'm angry myself at why why they'd cut anybody who shows promise. Um, there are guys out there who don't, and it makes no sense to me why they wouldn't. Um, but before that, I mean, how did you get into mixed martial arts? Uh, just mainly a fan, man. Just from, uh, you know, as long, as long as I can remember my family members ordering the first UFCs and uh, watching them and renting them from Blockbuster. You know, I've become a fan and uh, I've always been an actual fan of fighting. So decided to give it a shot and actually did something with it. Yeah, you're pr- pretty damn successful with it as well. Um, so, wh- where did you start training, and how did things how did things form together, as it were? Well, uh, we had a little gym down here in Louisiana called Gracie Baja. You know, big known gym. Uh, I actually started training under a, a black belt from Carlos Gracie Jr. and uh, went from there. And since taking my first amateur fight in 2008. Just uh, kept racking up one win after another, and next thing you know, turning pro and same thing. I mean, you know, no. jumped off to a nine and a, a nine and zero start, and got a shot in the UFC. Had you had the chance to wrestle at school or anything like that? Nope, never really done nothing before. Uh, just going in and training for everything. Well, you've had you've had a fantastic career, despite despite you know you got into it, should we say, a bit later in life. Then, um, but right. then once you had you know you started getting the wins up, how did the offer with Strike Force come about? How did that arise? Well, I'm actually uh, my manager. I'm, I'm managed by uh, Alchemist Management. You know, they're a big uh, management company, and uh, you know they, I'm sure they got good ties and. They called me to replace, uh, well, it was Gilbert Melendez, and I think it was Jorge Machado, but uh, they called me and asked me if I wanted to take the fight, and I said, hell yeah. I don't care who it is. I mean, that is, that's a big risk um, in terms of, you know, right. a lot of, you could have waited, but uh, so they just, they directly contacted you as soon as somebody dropped out. There's no second thoughts about anything. It was straight to you. Uh, I think it was that of somebody else, but, you know, my management was able to, you know, I guess show Zupa that I was a good fit for the fight, and turns out I was. Yeah, you pulled the you pulled the right strings, clearly. Um, but that's, that's another thing to mention. I mean, you you spoke about the Gracie Baja from where you're from. I mean, you, you began your career with mostly submissions, and then towards the end of 2012 you started getting these TKOs and then you also had the amateur knockout how have you progressed how would you say you've progressed would you say you're more of a jiu-jitsu guy or how would you look at it uh well I wouldn't say I was more of a jiu-jitsu guy you know I like to put on exciting fights and I like to stand up and uh you know it normally was the guys trying to take me down and as they did that you know I was normally able to submit them uh, you know, since I started fighting higher competition, things have kind of changed up a little bit, you know, like for the last two fights, you know, going to decisions, definitely wasn't used to decisions. So, uh, you know, I think that kind of got to me a little bit. And then fighting Siler, you know, I was, I'm not going to say I was unsure that I could finish him because I believe I should have in the second round. But that was still like, in the back of my head, if I could finish a guy at that level yet. That, that's the other thing that we got to we got to discuss is Joe Rogan loves to talk about um, uh, what does he call it octagon jitters when you have your first fight. 
did you did you feel it? Would you could you blame that um, to the to the, maybe the first round? Um, I mean, I guess you could say that. I mean, I don't like to make excuses or anything like that. But you know, fighting in the UFC and you know is definitely nerve wracking for one. You know, there's a lot more stuff than you have to do than normally just the uh, local fight. You know, there's a lot more medicals, a lot more interviews. You know, a lot more publicity. It gets out, so I mean, it's uh, it's different. Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy your experience? Oh man, it was best one of the best best experiences of my life. Well, that, it's a shame. I I still can't. I just can't understand why they cut you. I mean, obviously, obviously, it must be something personal, man. That's all I can say. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I hopefully, guess. Uh, hopefully, uh, I, I get back there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're only, you're still young. I mean, what are you, 26, 27? 26. There we are. You've still got a hell of a career to go. Um, you, you've only fought, as we said, you've only been fighting professionally for less than two, two and a half years. It is, your story is absolutely fantastic, man. And I, I personally wish you all the best. Um, as you. As for, I mean, looking again back at your past, have you got a favorite moment that you've had in a fight? Uh, not, I guess not really. But uh, if I had to pick one, it would probably be the second round against Steven Siler. Well, having the whole crowd behind you rooting for you? Yeah. Just knowing that from what I came back from, man, you know, he... uh. He did a lot of damage in that first round, and uh, I just knew that I had to get the second round, and I was just trying to take it to him with everything I had. Well, you you definitely proved it, and I guess I got one more question I've got to ask you, and this is you are the you are the one of the very few guys who can say you know you fought in both Strike Force and the UFC. What was how much of a big di- I mean, there is differences between every promotion, as you said. You've got interviews, you've got medicals, the more professionalism between everything. I mean, weigh-ins to everything. What? How would you describe the experiences differed? Uh, how they differed between Strike Force and the UFC? Uh, you know, Strike Force and the UFC, I guess, is basically was the same since you know they're both Zupa, but the UFC is still just so much bigger. The crowds bigger. Uh, you know, just a little bit, everything's a little bit better on the UFC side. I mean, I guess, I guess when you look at it as well, you were headlined by uh, John Jones and Charles Sonnen and then the, right. uh, in the strike force one, you were headlined by um, Tarek Safadine and Nate Mardcart. So you can see the crowds are going to be so much bigger. Uh, if, when you when you were first contacted after the strike force fight and the, you were probably going to go to the UFC, uh, did you just get the call or how did that happen? Uh, yeah, basically it was just the uh, just a call to replace uh, uh, Pat or replace uh, Mashadal and uh, against Pat, and you know we signed a four fight deal, and uh, they basically said, look. You know, you don't have a lot of people expecting you to win this fight, but we need you to do well. And uh, I did well. So Sean Shelby come to the back and asked me if I would like to come to the UFC in the 145 division. I said, hell yeah, I'll be there. That's brilliant, man. You, you sound like you're up for it. And this is this is these are the sort of fighters we want. We don't want people to pick and choose their fights. You said yourself right. you're a fan of this sport. Who is your Who's your favorite fighter? Uh, Chuck Liddell, and uh, it's kind of funny that you said that because, you know, Siler's from the pit, so, uh, you know, obviously that's Chuck Liddell's team, and John Hackleman was Siler's coach, and uh, after the fight, I talked to him a little bit, and he actually got Chuck to call me on the phone and talk to me while I was getting stitched up. Oh, that's fantastic, man. What sort of things did you talk about? Uh, Just a fight, man. He just told me, great fight, and I'll be back. Well, if Chuck's telling you that and he's working for the UFC, I think it's only a matter of yeah. time, man. Yeah, I hope so, man. Um, anyway, I personally wish you all the best, as I've said before. Um, I guess I'll give you a minute or two. I mean, you're at Kurt Hollibor on Twitter. It's very simple to find you there. Have you got any anywhere else that people can, you know, social network you? Uh, just basically Facebook and Twitter. 
how do I find you on the Facebook then? Just uh, Kurt Halibo. So it's pretty simple for everybody listening. And finally, have you got yep. any sponsors or anything that you'd love like, like to give a shout out to? Uh, not as of, not as of right now, man. Just uh, I'd give a shout out to Dana and tell him get my job back, man. Yeah, no, that's got to be done. Let it work. This is, it's got to be done on his behalf. I mean, you did mention your management company, Alchemy Management, I think you said. And yeah, when when's your fight again? We got to we got to write this date down so we can check out the results of it when it happens. Uh, July twelfth. And where's that at? It's gonna be at Homer, Louisiana. All right. So any anybody in Louisiana, you got to go check out. Got to go check out the fight. Are you gonna be headlining? Yep, I'll be the main event. Awesome. That's that's what we like to hear, man. But seriously, all the best in your future, and thank you very much for coming on this show. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. No worries. I'll talk to you later anyway. Hopefully we can get you back at some stage. Yep, give me a call. Thanks for listening, guys. That was my interview with Kurt Hollibar. Next week, we will have a... Uh, I don't know who we'll have. You know what it's like with me and trying to book someone. I'm rubbish at this. But anyway, that was Kurt. It's a fantastic interview. Great guy. Go follow him at Kurt Hollibar. Go find his Facebook. Thank If Kurt's listening, I want to thank you very much. And fantastic guest. And come on, Dana. Come on, the crew at the UFC. What are you playing at? You've got to get this guy signed. But anyway, guys, thanks for listening. And we will see you next week.